Hey there, I'm a fellow barbecue enthusiast, Mike Baker here, Baker's Barbecue. Hey, today we got the Mashable Electric Smoker, got it fired up, we got some B&B Champions Blend, uh, wood chips going in there, and we got about two and a half pound uh, brisket flat. The plan is today is we're going to put this in here, let it smoke, we're going to go through the whole cooking process, uncovered, I'm not going to wrap it. Uh, at the back end of the process, when the brisket's done, I am going to put some beef tallow and some aluminum foil and set the, uh, the the brisket down in that, wrap it tight, and I'm gonna let it sit there and rest as long as I can. Now, granted, as you always hear me say, there may be some changes and adjustments throughout this cooking process. For example, I will check it when it gets to the stall and see how the bark's looking. I'm gonna make sure it's not getting too dried out and make sure the brisket doesn't need to be wrapped. But my plan is, is to go all the way through unwrapped. I wanna see how this works out coming out of the Master Bill Electric Smoker. So if you would, be sure and stick around. Don't go nowhere. If you're new to the channel, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Make sure you ring that notifications bell uh, so you'll be notified of all future videos. If you're not new to the channel, hey, I really appreciate you coming back, supporting Baker's Barbecue. Let's get to smoking. All right there, my fellow barbecue enthusiasts. We got about a two and a half pound brisket flat. Beautiful piece of, beautiful piece of meat here. Uh, I'm going to bring you in here. I'm just going to show you how I trim it. There's really not much to trim on this brisket flat. It looks wonderful. Uh, and we're going to, after we get it trimmed, I'm going to use some uh, yellow mustard as a binder. And then I'm going to come back over that with some uh, Baker's Barbecue Champions win, a new rub I've come out with. And that's what we're going to go with our seasoning. So we're looking at my, a minimal trim uh, because there's not a whole lot of fat on it. But I will show you how we can go ahead and score it uh, to where in the future when it's time to cut it, you know where the, the grain is because you always want to slice against the grain when it's done. So I'll show you that. We'll get it seasoned up, trimmed. And this is actually the day before I'm going to actually uh, cook it. So I'm going to get it all seasoned, trimmed today, seasoned up, and put it into the uh, refrigerator overnight, and then we're going to smoke it tomorrow. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and show you, as you can see, hopefully you can see this, the grain of the meat is running this way right here. So in the future, when it's time to slice, you're going to be slicing this way across it this way right here. So the first thing I want to do, since I haven't seasoned it yet, I'm going to go ahead and take off this little corner and I'm going to do it just like this right here. Set that to the side so that when it's time, when the smokers, whenever the uh, brisket's done and I go to slice it, I know I need to slice just like this right here. And that'll go against the grain. So now that I got that done, I'm going to go ahead and flip it over where most of the fat cap is, like I said, there's not a whole lot, as you can see. It's a, it's already trimmed up pretty well, so I may not take much off of this. There's a little bit of hard fat there, <clears throat> but I kind of want some of that staying on there because I'll tell you what I'm thinking about doing on this on this cook is I'm thinking about taking this all the way through <clears throat> the entire cooking process and not wrapping it. That's what that's what my plan is. Uh, I may change that as we get further into the cooking process if. I look at it and I feel like it's getting dry on me and so forth. But that's my plan. I want to go ahead, just take it through the cooking process, unwrapped. I want to see how good that does on the bark and see how well that does in the uh, electric smoker doing that. What we'll do, of course, to make sure we have plenty of moisture in the smoker is we will be putting some liquids in the uh, Water pan, you can put anything in that. I mean, you can put anything from, if you want to put just pure water in there, you can do that. You can put a little bit of apple juice in there. You know, whatever kind of liquid you want, so it's just going to evaporate and eventually make its way up over the up over the brisket. You may not add a whole lot in the way of flavor or nothing like that, but, you know, everybody has their own preference. All right, guys, that's about all I'm going to do right there. I mean, it's not a whole lot. Not a whole lot to it at all. Put a little bit of mustard on there. It don't take much. Just rub that in. And I like to go ahead and season the side of the brisket that I'm going to have facing down first. And that way that I can get my seasoning on there and don't have to worry about it uh, coming back off. So it's going to be a pretty simple season process. I'm going to go ahead and get my edges first. And don't be afraid to go heavy. I mean, these briskets can handle a lot. It's a dense piece of meat. It looks small. 
And, you know, brisket will kind of trick you. It looks small, but this thing will, it'll take a long time to smoke it, and it can handle a whole lot of seasoning. Let's come back and just go real heavy with it like that. So just come on the bottom side here, which is going to actually, I say bottom side, it's actually going to be uh, facing up in the smoker. I'm going to do fat side up. Come right back across that with a good coat of, a good coat of rub. Like I said, don't be afraid to go heavy on it. And that's all there is to it right there. So now we got it all seasoned up. Beautiful piece of meat. Like I was saying earlier, it's going to go back into the refrigerator. I'm going to let it sit there overnight and just let the uh, seasoning work its way down into the meat. It's almost like a dry brine. And then tomorrow morning, we'll take it out an hour before we put it in the smoker, let it sit on the counter, sweat out. And then we'll get this bad boy in the smoker and let that electric smoker do its thing. We got a beautiful brisket right there. Can't wait to get this bad boy smoked up. All right, so we're fixing to get on this beautiful brisket. Like I said, it's about a two and a half pounder. And uh, my plan today is to go ahead and smoke all the way through the whole cooking process, unwrapped. I made sure I had plenty of water in my water pan. And uh, I'm just going to go through unwrapped. Now, at the end, what I'll do when it's time to wrap, if everything works out, I mean, it may, it may adjust throughout this video. And if it does, I'll tell you. But at the end, what I plan to do is that when it's done, I will put it, I'm going to put some beef tallow and foil and set the brisket on top of the beef tallow, wrap it up real tight, and I'll let it rest for as long as I can, three or four hours if possible. Depends on what time it gets done. All right, so I'm going to bring you in here. We're going to get this brisket in, in the Master Build Electric Smoker. And uh, we're going to let this thing do its thing. All right, so let's get this opened up. It's been warming up right at uh, about an hour. Nice looking brisket. It's going to set it right there, right directly over the top of the, uh, over the top of the water pan. After we got it up in there, I'm going to go ahead and position my, my thermometer probe up in it. What you want to do is take it about as measured against the meat. And then I like to go about halfway into it. Just take my finger as a placement. So when I put this in the smoker, I did make sure that on the, I put the, the side I'm going to be slicing from. Put that on the right-hand side just to kind of help me remember when I take it out uh, and where I position it to help me remember where I'll be cutting from. Just small little stuff like that will save you headaches in the back end. So uh, next thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to get me some uh, uh, wood chips over here in the... Uh, in the little wood chamber. I was using Champions Blend today, B&B. Got a little cherry in there, a little pecan, a little post oak. Reach in there and grab me a few good chunks. Little tube is hot. All right. Just like that. All right, so my plan is here is I'm not actually going to touch this. I'm going to let this go. Un I'm not even going to look at it until the temperature gets up there around the stall. Typically, it's going to hit the stall about the 160 to 170 range. So we're going to sit back and relax. I'm going to let this thing go until it hits the stall. When it hits the stall, I am going to take a look at it. I'm going to see how the bark's looking, see if I need to spritz it, just to keep it a little bit hydrated, make sure the water pan's doing its thing. And then we're going to shut it back up and we're just going to keep monitoring it throughout the rest of the cooking process. One of the things I do want to point out is you can see I've got my smokestack shut as far as it'll go. And when I, when I first start smoking, I like to do that because I want to get max smoke on this in the first couple hours. And then later, I will open that up a little bit. But, all right, so I want to show you guys my setup here. I have a lot of people ask about being set up in the garage. I don't always do set up in the garage, but uh, when the weather's bad, I do. So I got the smoker set, as you can see, at the edge of the garage door. And then on the back of my garage, I got uh, doors that open up back here that allows for good airflow coming through. Excuse my patio back here. I'm actually doing some cleaning today, getting ready for springtime. And as you can see back in. So I got it set up at the edge. I can easily yank it out of there if I needed to. And uh, this makes for a good covered area. To me, it's no different than if I was set up under a covered uh, patio. All right, so we're at the four-hour mark on this little brisket. And my temperature has come up to 169. It actually held at 160, 162 for about an hour. So I think it's starting to climb a little bit up out of the uh, out of the stall. So what I want to do is I'm just going to go ahead and take a quick look at it. I want to see how the bark's looking, see if I need to spritz it. 
And like I said, we're gonna we're gonna trug through this cook unwrapped. So let me bring you in here a little bit closer and we'll take a quick look at this brisket. Oh yeah, looking pretty good. Yep, bark is definitely set. As you can see, nothing's coming off except for just a little bit of the grease and juice. My spritz today is I got a little bit of water, a little bit of apple juice in here, or a little bit of orange juice, just a small amount for acidity, uh, for the the uh, acidity, and then I got a little bit of uh, apple cider vinegar. So I'm just going to give it a good spritz. All the way around, making sure I get the edges real good. We're going to push that bad boy back up in there and uh, let it keep on going. I'm thinking maybe about every uh, about every hour, 45 minutes to an hour. Uh, I'm just going to watch the temperature, and then uh, I'll come check it and see if it needs to be spritzed. Since I'm going unwrapped for that long period of time, I may want to spritz it more often. So, so we're hitting probe tender at uh, 196 degrees internal. So I hit that 195. I like to start. go ahead and start probing. So at 196, it's probe tender. I'm going to go ahead and take it off. I'm going to take it aside. I'm going to set it on some foil with some uh, beef tallow. Let it sit there and cool down on the counter uh, for about 30 minutes to an hour. And then I'll wrap it up and let it sit in that beef tallow and rest uh, for a couple hours. You're ready to eat. All right, let's get down in here. Oh, yeah. Check that out, boy. That is one beautiful brisket right there. I'm going to take it aside and get it wrapped up. All right, so we got it sitting down in the beef tallow. And I'm just going to let it sit there and cool off for a while here as it sits on the counter. And uh, when it drops down to probably about 150-ish or so in the center, probably about, you know, I'm going to let it sit about an hour. Then I'll wrap it up in the foil and let it continue to sit there and rest until we're ready to eat. Check out the bark on that bad boy. Wow. No wrap, brisket flat. It took it right at... Eight hours, put it on eight o'clock, took it off at four, turned out great, probing tender, and this looks like it's gonna be juicy. Got that brisket, wow. Yep, that is a thing of beauty right there. All right there, I'm a fellow barbecue enthusiast. We got this brisket flat all done. Kind of do a recap. We smoked it eight hours, unwrapped through the whole cooking process in the Masterbill electric smoker, I did after the eight hour mark, I took it off, I put it in uh, aluminum foil with some beef tallow, wrapped it up and let it set for about three hours on the smoker. Like I said, went the whole time uncovered. Uh, I did spritz it after about the, once it got to about 165 or so, kind of get into that stall area. I did spritz it about every 45 minutes to an hour, all the way through the end of the process and it turned out phenomenal. So I'm looking forward to getting a uh, taste of this thing and seeing how it did. Grab me a piece out of the center. Wow. Look at that. Hope you can see that. Juicy as it can be. Did a little pull test on it. Pulls right apart. Takes a little bite. Oh, man. Mmm. That's phenomenal. I got to tell you, going unwrapped through the whole smoker process really enhanced the bark. I think it enhanced the flavor as well. So I definitely recommend next time you fire up your Master Bill Electric Smoker to do a brisket, go ahead and do it unwrapped through the whole process. Uh, it may take a little bit longer, but it really yields a superior product. So I hope you guys have enjoyed the video today. If you would, please hit that subscribe button. Make sure you bring that notifications bell for all future videos. If you're not new to the channel, thank you again for coming back. Until the next time I see you, happy smoking. Mm -hmm.